welcome to another episode of Commercial Property Roadshow. Actually, the last for this year, for 2023, I've actually been on a road trip. I've gone to Cairns, into Mackay, out into Emerald, through Blackwater, Rockhampton, and now I'm at Tanham Sands, and it is just outside of Gladstone. So I've been through a few different mining areas, and I thought that this might be a good time to actually talk about uh, buying in mining towns, because I rarely talk about it, and I know that it's because, it's a bit windy there, uh, I know it's because that it can be a bit different and it can be definitely um, that a lot of people perceive it as high risk and it definitely has the high risk capacity to it but what should you invest in and I spoke to a few local agents while I was there I was in Emerald and um, and of course into Blackwater had a look at the coal museum so you know really did a bit of the research and the tourists uh, as well uh, took my two little kids onto the road as well. See, say hi Mers. Look at there. And you can see we're in Tandem Sands. So that just proves that I was there. Um, so what should you look for to buy mining towns? Number one thing you gotta be aware of is that industrial properties are the chosen property in mining towns. So you would obviously, there are logical choices to buy more industrial properties, but you need to buy, you need to look for brand name tenants this is where the brand name tenants comes in. Reliable tenants that's been there for a long time and that they have no problems paying rent. So one of the things that you would find, and this just is, is very typical of uh, mining towns, is that you have mining tenants who don't have a money issue, who pay the big high rents. They want a high level of, of, of property. So they like the, the, the well fitted out property as if you would find that in Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane. Right? So the fit out could be A grade fit out and they could be paying twice as much as what the market rent is in that area. So um, that's where you're going to find that uh, that you might be looking at a property in mining towns and going, oh my God, their rent is double what other people pay. Well, it's because for mining towns uh, and in mining areas, they have to attract a certain amount of staff. They've always had issues with staff. I mean, you've got the fly in and fly out, but you've got to think about what about the families, right? What about the women and the children that come or, or in a different town, right? And if they have um, a, a family there, or if there's females working in the office, they want a higher level of office spaces, like a class of fit out that it doesn't look like they're just look, living or working in a rundown shed, right? So in that sense, you might find that the actual uh, tenant is actually paying way more than what the market rent is, right? So it's a bit loud, I'm trying to get out of the wind. Oh, see if this is any better, sorry. Uh, just pause that for a sec. Well, that didn't turn out to be better, so I'm just gonna come back and um, and probably do this video here where it's a, the least windiest of it all. But the main thing I wanna to convey to you is that people here, when they go into mining towns, they're, they're will willing to pay a higher level of rent but they're expecting the high level fit out as well so if you see that in Townsville and in areas that are like a Mackay or even in areas like a Chinchilla you'll know that that's the reason why it doesn't mean they're paying above market it's just that because they they want to retain their staff it's one of those staff perks that they will and because uh, they can afford to and money's no object in, in when they've got a mining project on because it's heavily funded that's where they're willing to pay the higher rents as well so in essence most people when they're buying mining towns, they're searching for the higher yield, right? Because it's one one major industry. So if you're searching for the higher yield, uh, we're looking for, you know, eight, nine, ten percent plus. Back in the day before COVID, towns like Emerald was doing twelve percent, right? Towns like Mount Isa was doing twelve percent, towns like Chinchilla was doing ten percent. Now, a lot of those areas like like a glass that have shrunk to seven to eight percent, right? Where traditionally it was doing, you know, in 2016 to 2018, it was doing anywhere from nine to ten percent. Obviously, areas like a glass and a Mackay chinchillas and even emeralds have come a long way in the last two or three years especially the bounce back after COVID but you've got to think about remember your tenant who's mining tenant is also paying above market rent or higher market rent and you need to get higher than market yield right so if you're buying emerald at eight percent you're probably buying too low because if that tenant moves out and you get someone paying ordinary rent your, your returns are going to drop to six percent whereas if you bought in say for example emerald at it bought bought in at nine or ten percent uh when the rent adjusted you'll be getting a market um adjustment to the yield which is eight percent one of the things to, to really understand is that the yield correlates with the rent and the tenant 
and what the market conditions is. Now, a lot of buyers agents will tell you that, oh yes, it's 8%, let's just chase that. If you haven't been to the area, you don't know the local people, you don't know what to invest in, then don't go with that choice. Go with somewhere that you're familiar with, even if the loads, the yield's a little bit lower, go with something that you are comfortable with. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is you can't have high the market rent, high the market yield, or, you, or actually what most people want is market rent, high the market yield, and high capital growth, right? That doesn't exist in that combination. But what you can do is for the next little while, if you're thinking of really com really saving your cash flow, that you know, if you're negative in the residential space and you really want to uh, get ahead with your cash flow, want to insulate yourself, is to invest in those smaller towns outside of those larger towns or into a mining town. So outside of Mackay, we've got Serena. Uh, outside of Townsville, we've got Air. Outside of uh, Cairns, we've got Gordon Vale, right? Those those towns, right? We also have Innisfail, we also have Ingham, right? Those are all towns that are outside of those large major towns who will deliver a 9% plus. Just wait for this truck to go past. Right? Then, of course, we're looking at the bigger towns like in Emerald, which has 15,000 people, but probably have a catchment of 50,000. Uh, we're looking at a Mackay, which has 120,000 people. All of those areas all of those things what you're going to find is that those yields need to sit above the eight percent for you to be able to do that deal okay if you're not uh if you're not getting that eight percent plus then you shouldn't be buying into that those towns because don't forget that it's risk money versus your returns as well and the risk money really comes from how much cash flow you can get for a short space of time where it can plug your your negative goals and your negative cash flow goals. Um, so let's say you're, you're negative, you know, 30 or 40,000 at the moment because you've got residential. You absolutely have to look at going to these smaller areas or these mining towns where you can get clear 30, 40 thousand dollars on buying a million dollar property, right? Also, the other thing is not to overextend in those towns. Don't go for a three million dollar, five million dollar property where you can start with one or two million or even 500 to 1.2 million because uh, you want to spread your risk around. So you don't want to put all your eggs in, your in one basket in that town. So, but having that thirty, forty thousand dollars will plug your cash flow now. But then in the future, once the market comes back and the interest rate drops a little bit, you can always look at selling out of those towns, coming more back into metro areas or larger metro or regional, larger regional towns, and therefore uh, make stabilizing your portfolio. Right. So that's got a bit of strategy along with you know investing into mining towns. So again, in most mining towns, it's not a no-no. You definitely can. And I think under certain circumstances, you should invest into mining towns, especially when you ha you're highly negatively geared in your residential space. So, you know, getting a, a 8, 9, 10% you know, right now is, is gold, right? So in these mining towns, we're looking at all regional uh, Queensland inland. We're looking at quite inland in Victoria and into uh, into Adelaide, and we're looking quite inland into New South Wales. Those are the areas that are going to deliver those yields. But in mining towns, we're looking at you know a Musselbrook in um, in, in in New South Wales, uh, you know areas around Kempsey, which you know obviously it's quite flat. Obviously, we're looking at uh, there's a lot more in regional Queensland. You know Mount Isa's, your Chinchillas, your uh, your, your, your emerald into your black water uh, even some parts of Rockhampton and of course Mackay those are all sort of towards that mining run and of course Gladstone as well so those areas if you get the high yield and you know that it's only for a short period of time you sell out and you come back uh, that is a great strategy to move forward so when you're investing money to have a strategy follow the strategy really vet your tenant Make sure you have a buffer in place in case the tenant leaves or asks for incentives. Remember that your tenants are going to be your mining kind of tenants. You want those type of tenants if you're going to be in mining towns. So don't buy a fish and chip shop in a mining town. I mean, look, it's not saying no, no, but you're getting 11 or 12%, yeah. But if you're buying it, it's better to buy a brand name tenant, one of those established tenants that are servicing the mining industry. So they might be doing mining equipment, mining servicing. They might be doing mining testing. They might be working the mines themselves, right? So one of those tenants, right? So then you want to have like like an on-site, right, for example, or, or a tenant that services uh, lots of equipment that, you know. So those are the tenants you want. Those tenants have multiple areas, multiple spot sites all around that North Queensland gateway and they can afford the rent. They absolutely um, love the premise. They're there for the long term. 
and they've got funding to be able to afford it. So, um, and they are going to give you stable cash flow to bypass what's happening in the economy right now in the next couple of years to allow you to plug your cash flow negative uh, portion of your portfolio and then sell out, come back more into the metro areas so that uh, you stabilize your portfolio. So hopefully that's been helpful. If you want someone to help you build a cash flow rich portfolio, reach out to me, Helen Tarrant, Unicorn Commercial Property. My details are below. Order my book because that's really going to give you the definitive guide on commercial property uh, and also help me achieve bestseller uh, in that book category. So order my book, please, and leave me a review. But furthermore than that, if you are thinking seriously buying in the mining town, do reach out for some help because, you know, email us. We can talk to you about it. There are certain areas to go to, certain areas to not to, and certain things to buy and certain things to avoid. And we'll love to help you assess it because I'm here on a mission to help people really profit and get to financial freedom through commercial property. And I don't want you to miss out by making a mistake because literally making a mistake in commercial property costs you thousands of dollars, uh, yeah, or tens of thousands. So reach out to us. We have the expertise to help you. Let us help you build a cash flow rich portfolio. But also on top of that, I'll see you in 2023 where I'll have my predictions of where to go to buy in 2023. So I'll see you at the towards mid-January in uh, 2023 in my next video. Bye for now. Have a lovely Christmas and New Year.